This is TWIP Apps, Polar. In this episode of TWIP Apps, Bore Wang from Polar Inc. joins me to discuss their incredible photo editing app, Polar. Today we'll be looking at it on an iPhone, but not only does the app scale all the way up to the iPad Pro, Polar also has a sister app on Mac OS X with near feature parity. Between the extensive editing tools, beautiful effects library, and innovative way to share presets, you'll soon see why Polar is leaving other photo editing apps in the cold. Hello and welcome to another episode of TWIP Apps. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and today I'm here with Bore Wang from the company Polar Inc. to talk about his new iOS app called Polar. Bore, thank you for being here and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. I'm super excited. Now, I found your app, or maybe somebody on my website had recommended it to me, but I checked it out and I really, really liked what I saw. And uh, I think we did a post on it already on the website. And I reached out to you to say, hey, do you want to come on and talk about this awesome tool that you've got here? And uh, you very graciously said yes, and here you are. Yeah, I'm glad to have this opportunity. Um, and it's so awesome that you wrote about it. And uh, I think it's a pretty fair statement of what Great. we're doing. Awesome. Well, I like to hear that. So before we get into taking a look at the app itself, tell me a little bit about your company. So Polar Inc., how many people are there? Is it just you? Is it you and an army of 100 engineers? What's going on here? Yeah, so, um, so Polar is a six-people company, and uh, we've been just uh, a little bit more than a year old. Okay. Um, I started the company after I graduated from uh, Stanford in 2014, and then I was having the idea of, you know, I've been using Photoshop and Lightroom for years and years. I was also a part-time photographer. I was just thinking about making something cooler for my friends um, so they can um, have an easier time to learn Photoshop and Lightroom because they used to have to buy books and a lot of them were using like Instagram. Uh, so I made this little Chrome app uh, at the time. That was like beginning of 2015. It was last year. Um, and uh, it got some attention from Google Chrome, uh, the Chrome store, mm. and we decided to have more people working on this together. So that's how we started a company. And we launched the iOS app uh, and then like the OSX app and everything over the past year. So the, okay. last, tw the last 12 months was, was a pretty good growth for us. Nice. Very cool. Awesome. So tell us a little bit, just a high level overview of the app Polar. What, what does this app actually do? And, and again, we're talking about the iOS app here. Um, we might, maybe we'll have you on the show another day mm -hmm. to talk about the OS 10 app, but uh, for iOS, tell us a little bit, just a high level overview, what this app does mm -hmm. and who it's for. It's really good for people who are familiar with desktop grade photo editing app and want to find something similar on their iPad or iPhone. Um, lots of professionals, you know, and amateurs uh, or like hobbyists, enthusiasts, they are like, they want to adjust curves, they want to adjust HSL or uh, other ones, lighting and toning, and they couldn't find similar tools uh, on the phone because the most phone apps are designed for very quick filtering. Mm -hmm. So we bring everything that's kind of the ones and professional um, that people usually see on that stuff and make it into a very compact um, the photo editing app is easier to use, easier to understand. Um, so that's the purpose of the app is give the maximum freedom for people to manipulate their photo and have really high quality at once photo editing okay. on their mobile devices. Okay, great. And who would you say the target market is? Is it more consumer oriented or is this really more towards your higher end photographer? We started with the very high end photographer. Um, because only them appreciate, you know, adjusting tone curves and uh, <laughs> why they have to, there has to be like five different things for win it. Um, but then we figure lots of consumers, because they're on the phone, they start to get really curious. So a big portion of our app users are actually uh, those who were just using Instagram and they kind of graduated from the, the Instagram app and they want to look for something more at once. So we also have cash users, but the intended audience was kind of the medium level, semi-pro to pro. Okay, got it. And uh, last question here, what's the price of Polar on iOS? It's a free app. Um, okay. We offer most, I would say 90% of the functionality for free until you oh, wow. sort of want to do crazy color masking, local adjustment, then you can pay $4.99 to unlock all the pro features. Okay. We also have filter packs. Um, that's kind of, so you can save you some work and time and each filter pack is $1.99. Got it, and how many are there? So far, we have 10 filter packs, and okay. you can buy all of them for $10. Okay. 
Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And the thing, the main thing about Polar is all the filter pack, once you install it and you, you sort of, when you use the filter, you can actually see the parameters and the configurations behind it. So you can literally like, you know, uh, create the filter by yourself. Okay, uh, so just the, a shorthand for you. The filters are are presets. They're not the presets. separate filters. They're presets of all the functionality that's already in the app. Yes, and you can inspect what's behind it. You can tune it further. I think I can demo that later in the show. All right, so now we are going to take a look at the app Polar. Uh, Bore has got this up and running on his iPhone. What what uh, what type of iPhone is it you're running there, Bore? I'm running an iPhone six S iPhone 6s. Okay, so this is a 6s, and we are going to have a look at this uh, at this app now. Here we go. All right, so tell us what we're looking at here. Um, so this is the main screen uh, of the app when you import the image. So um, you can import the image by just uh, clicking on the upper left. There's a little arrow, mm -hmm. and you can also choose which album you want to import from. Uh, and uh, I chose the one that uh, looks like a pyramid. Okay. Oh. And when you import it, you're presented with uh, kind of like a, a two columns of tools you can play with the image. And the good thing about Polar is you can actually rearrange the locations of the tools. You know, if you're left-handed or right-handed, we can adapt it to you. So you just long press a uh, icon, uh, and then you can, while you're long press, you can drag them around. You can drag it to the left-hand side, uh, or you can move something to the right-hand side. That's really cool. Yeah, and these, these tools are, you know, I think some of the icons are fairly obvious, like these are the filters. Um, and we sort of have a little guide to tell you, you know, you can tap here to see more. Mm -hmm. And as you, as you drag them around, you can see like the panels just automatic rearrange. And um, then you have like crop settings, and you can collapse like a, a toolbar if you want to. Uh, these are just the standard cropping. You can uh, tilt it a little bit. You can change like different crop ratios. You can even like flip them around. Um, and then we have um, uh, on the lower right we have the undo setting. So this just goes back to the previous edit. How and, many levels of undo are in there? Um, we have infinite. Like for okay. example, uh, on the upper uh, left we have the history. This shows you all the all the edit you have done so far. Oh, that's um, fantastic! So you know, like for example, if you apply a filter, see, like when I apply a filter here, I can also adju adjust the strings of the filter, and uh, and most of uh, most of the adjustment will be tracked in history as well. Um, that's very cool. I think the most interesting thing, like uh, most of ones users will want to see, is is kind of the adjustments, right? Um, and the adjustments is. The little knob on the, I think it's the second to last icon uh, on the left. So you open that. And then here, if you scroll around, you see there's like little tabs that gives you um, different categories of adjustment you can do to the photo, like color, light, detail, optics, and stuff. And then color, you get um, all the standard uh, treatment of color temperature, tint, and vibrant saturation. And in order to do that, you have two modes of operation. Uh, the simple way is you can tap on a color block or adjustment pad and then you can just move on the slider and as you do that you can see the the image uh, the temperature of the picture the picture is changing mm -hmm. another way is you can just hold on this block i'm actually tapping my finger i'm holding it i'm dragging it diagonally on the block so that's, that's very cool that's like an easier way when you sort of get used to it um that you don't want to see um you don't want to see the slider because it's like blocking your view or something. Right. Um, so that's an easier mode. The rest of them are pretty standard, like, you know, for exposure, brightness, contrast. These are tools you see in lots of floating apps. And we also have highlights and shadow adjustment. Um, for example, if I adjust the shadow, you see only the shadow part of the image is changing. Um, and uh, diffuse is kind of like adding light kind of diffusing the light around the particles, a simulation uh, of adding soft light to the image. And in detail, we have clarity, um, uh, something that, that uh, increases the macro contrast on your images and sharpening. We also have dehaze, uh, which is a pretty cool tool, let's see, um, that, that kind of remove haze uh, using computer algorithms. And some of the more advanced features, such as 
like like what I said, what I mentioned before, is right? for Winnet, we have five different settings for the mount to the feathering, um, you know, to preserve the highlight around the borders mm. and uh, the size of the Winnet. So you have everything. That's uh, impressive. And for distortions, uh, when you adjust the distortions, you sort of have, sorry, um, they sort of have like a little grid showing you how you want to have the pin cushion or mm -hmm. the power distortion. And same thing, like you can adjust the horizontal perspective distortion or the vertical one. So if you're like doing a building or something, it's uh, very handy. Very good. For HSL, I don't know if people are familiar with uh, the concept of HSL, but um, what it does is um, it kind of gives you the ability to to uh, adjust a certain color of the image. So for example, um, if I just want to change the orange color, uh, I can change the hue of the orange color. Oh, uh, very as you cool. can see, like it's kind of shifting from green to red a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I can change the saturation of orange. Uh, right. So you're basically by tapping the color palette, you're choosing you're saying, I want to adjust everything in this image that's basically this shade of orange or somewhere around this orange, yes. somewhere around this blue. Yeah, I just that loaded awesome. another image. And mm -hmm. uh, so let's try uh, playing with the uh, hue. Um, you see the sky's color yep. is changing because I'm uh, adjusting the, the, the saturation. Yeah, the saturation of equal. And uh, I can adjust the hue as well. Um, that's awesome. And for curves, uh, it's, it's a pretty standard. Um, curve control uh we have like a curve overlay on top of image oh i like that so yeah because you need a good size curve to really be able to control it so that's a great way to do it yeah to pop up over yeah. the image yeah and then um i think this is not like the perfect image because uh it's kind of complicated but but when you adjust it yeah. you can see there's a little uh there's a little number uh, on the upper left uh panel of the curve that shows you the coordinate mm -hmm. so it could be very handy now the image is kind so of can weird be very accurate uh, if you wanted to yeah, and again, like all these adjustments are in your history panel. You see, um, all my adjustment, I can go back to any, any time in history. I can go back to the adjustment in my uh, color hue. So is it kind of every time you take your finger off of the screen that gets locked in as a, as a step in yes. history? Yes, yes. Every time you take the finger off uh, your screen, it locks, it logged a, a new history point. Wow. And then now for... Can you, can you go back into the history and remove a single a part of the history without removing everything else like let's say that i cropped the image at first and then made a, a curves adjustment now i want to go in and remove the crop yeah by going we, into the we, history unfortunately we cannot like remove a history uh okay. it's more like uh you know uh let's see if i'm adjusting uh yeah and um you can undo up to the point uh in the past uh you can tap on a certain like uh uh, tab in the history panel to redo, but right. as soon as you uh, attempt to override it, let's say, I'm tilting it, it kind of deletes all the history up until the point. Right, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty, fair enough. Um, and then toning is, is kind of adding like a, a color overlay or um, kind of like a, uh, a blending of highlights and shadows on, your, on top of your image. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty good tool to simulate like the film look. Um, we have a, some sort of color swatch. I'm just tapping on the different uh, different color blocks. So give you like a little um, flavor of different are, highlights. Are those shots. like presets then? So you tap the highlights, you can yes. drag it around, or yes. you can just tap one of those colors to get a preset. Okay. Yes. And then like the last panel is just the uh, effects. Uh, you got some fringing going on. You can pixelate the image uh, <laughs> into some like pixel art if you want to. Uh, some green controls. And that's pretty much it. And, you know. Um, so this is the global adjustment and, um, a cool thing about the global adjustment is I'm just dragging the filter. So all the filters in polar, um, when you tap on it, you can actually see, um, what's being used, um, as adjustment, right? Like if okay. I tap like the IF5, IF4, you can see the, the adjustment panel on the left is changing the temperature, the vibrance. And the highlights and shadows very cool so it's like you know if you have a filter that you really like you can keep modi modifying it um and uh, that's a, that i think is a pretty handy feature and you can even save your filter as your own custom so in this tab here there's a custom filter 
and you can pretty much hit the create a filter button. It will ask you a name of the filter if you want to. Let's say I will just use random uh, R. Oh, there's a bug. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. And then if you click save, this is going to be a filter called R that you can use later. No, go back into there real quick into your filter saving uh, tool. Yeah. So, okay, crop selective and main adjustment. So you can you can choose to save a preset where without the cropping, for example, or yes. without selective would be painted adjustments. Yes, I can show that now, actually. Yeah, um, but that's that's really cool. And so then from the I'm um, just going to go back to our camera real quick from the uh, that share that ability to save out those presets. I saw there's a share in there so you can create your own presets and then you can share them with your friends. You can yes. post yeah, let online. me show you. Um, so I'm just uh, I'm open another image. This is like the R effect on this image uh, just to show like uh, you can apply it filters uh, to different images. So you can long tap this and you know you can either like share when you create it or you can long tap on the filter. Uh, there's a share filter. Um, well let me let me just quickly log in. Sorry about this. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, sharing requires us to to log in because um, because we kind of uh, want people to um, later retrieve all the filters they created. Mm -hmm. uh, so we introduced the uh, account system as you see, like when you click share, it actually creates a before and after look with a little barcode. Um, and uh, what, it, what this allow people to do, uh, let me just demonstrate again. So you have this filter, you click share, and you see, um, I, can, I, can say, I can save this image to my camera roll. And this filter was, was you know, the, the little screen um, shows you the before and after. If I delete this filter, I say I remove it. And I can import a filter from photos. That was the filter that I just uh, exported. So that was. Um, so, so just that by was, selecting that photo because of the barcode in there, it sees yes, the barcode. We, we kind of scan the barcode. You, you can also choose to scan the barcode. There's like a scan filter, which just brings up a, <laughs> a, a scanning, and you can scan the barcode. So that's how okay. we share filters. So, all right, so that would allow you to, um, if you and I were sitting there next to each other and I came up with a really cool filter thing, yeah. uh, I could just do a save and hold with the barcode and you can take your phone and scan it and now you've got that That's right. preset in there. Or if I wanted to maybe sell some presets, I could come up with my presets, save them yeah. as a folder full of pictures, yeah. sell that and someone can download the pictures and just import them all this way. Yes, so like when you Love share it. your filter, you can see you can, you can send someone to email, um, you know, I'm just like mailing someone this. See, yeah. this R bipolar and has scammy in. Um, so that's it's pretty handy if um, if you want to showcase your work or I share it to social media. Yeah, I think that's a brilliant way to handle presets. Yeah, uh, very very cool. Yeah, I think <laughs> you know, uh, I think a big part uh, that, that I want to introduce about the app next is the selective adjustment. Okay. So the selective adjustment here. Um, is the little like circle with the dot, you know, trying to indicate it's a masking mm -hmm. feature. Um, we currently support four, uh, three different kind of masks. We are adding more uh, in the future, but we have a radio mask, and the radio mask is just pinpoint a circular region uh, for editing with the radio uh, adjustment tools. And what they allow you is you can choose like a, a, a just a specific circular region to adjust. Um, right now, my mask is actually by default inverted. Um, mm -hmm. Let me show you. So if I change the blurriness, as you can see, uh, the parts that's outside the circle is being blurred. Mm -hmm. uh, if I scroll to the bottom, I can actually invert it. So the, the center part is being blurred. And then I can add lots, lots of different effects. You know, I can add like a color overlay. Um, so basically, you see like everything that's outside the circle is now having like a little blue tone. Um, I can pixelate it. <laughs> you know, there's all kind of stuff you can do. Uh, That's great. For the, for the radio shader, I can adjust the saturation. I can make it black and white. I can uh, change the tint. I can change the color temperature, I think. Color is too strong. Um, and I can also adjust the feather as I'm scrolling. Um, the feather is just change um, how sharp mm -hmm. this radio adjustment is. Yep, of course. Um, okay. And I can add as many as I want. Um, I, can, I can add another radio mask. 
you know, and say, I just want to change it. Um, I can, I just want to warm this part up. Sorry, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of destroying this image, but <laughs> just to illustrate the functionality of the app. Yeah. And now you Is have there a limit to circles. how many masks you can add? Infinite. Yeah. Infinite masks. Wow. Yeah, infinite mask. That is so similarly, um, you know, I'm just deleting these. I can add a gradient mask. Uh, it works in a pretty similar way. You just create a gradually changing edit with gradient. Um, and uh, you see the, the three controls is top, medium, um, and bottom. It kind of create a natural, um, let's say the exposure start from the top is lower exposure. And then in the bottom became normal again. Um, you can create like a little, you know, even tilt and shift effect um, because you can add blur. Let's say blur to the top. Um, let me just make it more obvious. So it's more warm mm -hmm. to the top. And uh, in here, I can, I can have something called a reflect. Um, so in the bottom panel, if you reflect it, you can actually see um, mm. that the, the, the adjustment is being reflected on both sides. And right. I can invert it uh, as well. And uh, so the same philosophy uh, as the, the radio adjustment is just, um, it's just it's drawing a gradient instead of a circle. Just linear. Yeah, absolutely. That's really powerful. And well, the, I'm impressed. This is, uh, I mean, basically everything that I saw in the OS X version is here. Yeah. That's incredible. There's one thing that an OS X version doesn't have is the color mask, uh, which <laughs> we will introduce to the OS X X soon. Uh, so color mask is a very powerful tool. It's selectively, it's selectively added color regions. Um, and let me show you what it means. So, so you see there's a circle with a dot. And the dot mm -hmm. is kind of like a, a color picker. It's, uh, let's say it's picking the purple here. And when they adjust the saturation of it um, or the exposure of it, it actually, um, it actually selects all the purple uh, in this region. If I move this around, let's say I move to the sky, you see the sky is being, um, the exposure of the sky is de decreased. If I change to this person here uh, or mm -hmm. like the hat here, is that region of the color is changing. Um, so maybe like a better image is back to this. So, um, or maybe like, a, let's see something like this with more color. Um, so if I change a color mask, I'm pointing it in like this, this, uh, stripy shirt and, uh, the orange here. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to change the color tone. You see, um, this specific color block is changing. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I expand the selection, it will, it will change the entire um, right. color regions of that specific color. So this is something um, that we've been working on and we want to introduce to OX10, uh, make it easier for people to adjust just a specific region of the color without worrying about, you know, is it going to be a circle? Is it going to be a gradient? So got it. Now, can you brush an effect in and out at all? That's going to be the fourth uh, tool. Okay. That we are going to have. We don't have a brush right now, but you can see the, the way we, we did this was everything was modular. So right. we have the radio mask module, the gradient mask module, the color mask, and then we have a brush module, okay. which will be introduced soon. Okay. That's, now with the brush module there, will you be able to uh, say you do a linear mask or a radial mask, and then you want to brush out part of that linear or radial mask? Can you do that? We are still thinking about to? it. Um, ideally, we want to allow very... Uh, flexible masking ability. So having mm -hmm. the ability to not just draw, uh, but to remove and add more parts to the color mass or gradient mass is definitely something you want to do. Okay, very good. And um, I haven't put this on my iPad Pro yet, but does it, uh, can you do anything with the Apple Pencil in here? We don't really have, because we don't really have lots of drawing in this app yet, but yes, for, for the masking, uh, the brushing. Right, I guess yeah, once you get into the brushing, that would be. We definitely support um, the Apple Pencil and, and our app looks great on iPad. It's actually um, looks better on the iPad. Is it optimized for iPad Pro for the extra big screen on the iPad Pro or is it going to be the same interface on any iPad? It's going to be the same, um, but it, it's, it's sort of adaptive. It's like a website, you know, when you, yeah, make, you know, some apps, some apps, when you pull them up on the iPad Pro, the the menu bar and everything is bigger because it's just scaling the app. It's not native. Oh, to the we, iPad we, we, no, we, we designed the right ratio for all screen sizes. Okay, great. Yeah. So it'll look great on the iPad. Good. Pro. Good. I always like to hear that. Um, okay. I do, was there something else you wanted to demo or is there, uh, I think that's pretty much okay. it. I, I think, you know, you probably got, get a sense that this is something 
um, a, a the ones for top we want to use. Yeah, uh, we probably also get a sense like for people who are just very casual, they can just like go through the filters, and they just choose the filter they want, and they just hit the export. Um, right. So, yeah, that's absolutely. It. Very, very cool. Okay, so uh, a tough tech question for you. Often, a lot of the apps that I've looked at in the past, once you bring your picture in and you do whatever you do to it and you export it out, it gets scaled down to either 20, 48, or 40, 96 pixels. Mm -hmm. Are you doing any scaling on export? Or are you maintaining the full resolution? So due to performance issues, we, we've been doing scaling to 40, 96, unfortunately, uh, for this okay. current version. Uh, but we've even seen we've seen iPhone 6s and iPad Pro to have better um, GPU and RAM. Right. Um, we already have a prototype that does full export, uh, full resolution export. We just have to make sure um, it does it in a moderately fast um, sure. you know, speed. And and once we have that, uh, we will release a version um, so you can import a 24 megapixel image and we can just export in full resolution. So so for example, um, like for this specific. These kind of images, um, the loading time is probably like a second, um, and the export time is, I would say, like a 500 microsecond or something. Um, but on the iPad Pro, it could be like 100 microseconds, a lot faster. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something uh, we, we're thinking about. Sure. And you could certainly have it, I mean, I say this, you could, as a feature perspective, I have no idea engineering-wise if it's possible or not, but if you have an, a device like the iPad Pro that has the power to do f to handle the full resolution, let that one do the full resolution. And if I'm on a, an iPhone 5 or something that may not have the power for it, that it only works in the 4096 yes. size. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah for, for me and for anybody who's any photographer who is trying to use their iPad as a professional tool, uh, it's really really important to not have to worry about my images being scaled down yes. and i've ripped apart a lot of apps that that are doing that lightroom used to do it right they finally got that fixed but adobe's own lightroom was scaling images it was just unacceptable yeah so, so you can see how it, it, you know you can probably feel it's a tough technical problem absolutely right if absolutely. adobe is struggling with it for a couple of years uh, we well, have the exact same yeah issue. i don't know if struggling was the right word there but yeah. um but the fact that it can be the, the ipad pro has the power I, mm -hmm. This is such an insanely powerful machine, and obviously all these iOS devices are getting more and more powerful every day. So, yeah, I, I totally get that some of the older devices, it can't do it, and of course performance is important. You want it to look and feel fast, but um, if, if you're using it on a professional device like the iPad Pro and you're still losing resolution, then for the end user, that can be, that can be a non-starter. It can, it can makes the, it makes the tool cool for Instagram, but not for you know, quote unquote, real work, if I, if that's important to me and for uh, any pro photographer, it's going to be. Yes. At least it's 4096, though. I mean, that's, there is that. It's, I know a lot of the other apps were uh, down to 2048. So, yeah, 4096. Yeah, 4096 is good. good for all the onboard camera, like the building camera for iPad Pro or iPhone 6S. Sure. As sure, soon of as course. You, you get the SR level images, it's. Yeah. 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 And that's what professional or higher end photographers are going to be doing of course they're not using the camera on the ipad they're using a real camera importing the pictures and then wanting to edit from there so yeah, yeah so it's good to know that that's something you're working on and aware of um, mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's going right, to be right, an important right. a very important aspect to it right on well thank you so much that was uh that was fantastic this is a very very impressive app i really like what i've seen here and and uh, like I said, I obviously I'd looked at the OS 10 version, um, had really not played much with the iOS version. And it's remarkable to me that it is uh, largely the same I and mean, all the same features in there. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Good, well done. Congratulations. Oh, on that. Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Alrighty. So uh, before we wrap up the show, we have a portion of the show that we call the guest app pick, where our guest gets to pick their favorite app on any platform, photo-based, obviously. And of course, it can't be their own app. So, Bori, what is your app pick? What is the app that you love that isn't your own that you want to tell us about? Uh, I picked an app called Glitch. It's, it's a paid app. Uh, I think it's $1.99. Uh, it's always on top of uh, the paid photo category. I like it because a lot of the photo editing apps focus on making, I would say, conventional adjustment on images. But that app focuses on making very interesting sometimes strange effects um the, the reason it's called glitchy because it, you can create glitchy effects like the old uh 60s television and <laughs> they, they do it in a very um fast um and entertaining and interactive way um and uh sometimes it can bring you pretty big surprises so i like it 
Very cool. Dollar ninety nine glitch or glitch a perhaps. I'm not quite sure how yeah. it's meant to be pronounced, but uh, great. So we'll we'll put that in the show notes so that our uh, viewers can find that app and download it if they like. So very cool. Glitch a dollar ninety nine on the App Store. Cool. Thank you so much. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. Before we say goodbye to you, uh, where can people learn more about your app and download it? Obviously, it's on the App Store, but where else can they find more inform information about it? They can go to our homepage. Um, which is polar.co. Again, polar has two R's in it. It's P O L A R R. And that's our homepage, polar.co. It's, awesome. it's where you can find our products, our tutorials, and information about the team, our upcoming releases, and everything. Very good. And you're on Twitter? We are on Twitter. Um, unfortunately, like a polar handle was registered by someone. <laughs> uh, so we use Polarist. Um, you know, P O L A R R I S T. Got you it. know, we, we add the polaris to make it feel like more like a person. Right. Um, I got it. Yeah. That's cool. No, that's good. I like it. And then, um, if people are going to post photos created with polaris, what hashtag should they use? Just polaris or polar? they can they can hashtag polar. Uh, okay. You know, I think lots of Instagram users are hashtagging polar. That's just right. What it is, yeah. Very good. Awesome. Well, thank you again for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Appreciate the demo. It is a fantastic app. And, uh, and I and I'm sure all of our viewers wish you the absolute best with this. Oh, thanks. Thank you for the opportunity to showcase this. Good stuff. Yep. All right. You take care. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye bye. All righty. So that was Bore Wang with Polar app, the Polar Inc. And the app is called Polar. And it's uh, that's impressive. I got to say that is something that I I'm really quite blown away by uh, the amount of power that's packed into this tiny little app is, is certainly something that you don't see every day. Uh, clearly, he was demoing it on an iPhone, which is obviously going to be a smaller interface. But I think, as you saw, it's quite usable on there. And I think that um, using it on a bigger screen on an iPad, whatever size iPad that would be, is obviously going to be, uh, be a bit even easier there. So I'm really looking forward to playing with it on, on the bigger screen. The only kind of drawback that I've seen so far is the whole thing about size, the fact that it scales back to 4096, that's obviously going to be a bit of a bummer if you're bringing in a you know, 20 megapixel, a 24 megapixel image and you expect to see that full size on export. So uh, that's unfortunate, but that is the reality of a large number of apps today. But as we have been discussing on, uh, on the photoapps.expert site, that is something that is changing. I don't know about changing rapidly, but it is changing. More and more developers are becoming aware of this uh, limitation that users don't want that limitation and they are with the power of devices like the iPad Pro being able to add that uh, add that functionality in there. So that is it. Thank you so much for joining us today. So that brings us to the end of another episode of Twip Apps. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and you can find me on the socials at Photo Joseph, as well as on my website at photoapps.expert. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook and to visit our website at thisweekinphoto.com where you can sign up for our email list and be notified of new episodes. Also, you can get exclusive subscriber bonuses there, so be sure to check that out. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and comment, subscribe and share and all that good stuff. And if you're watching it on the website, you can subscribe to the show using the subscribe links on the website there. If you have feedback, suggestions, or comments about the show, you can reach me, Photo Joseph, directly by using our contact form on the website at This Week in Photo. Just click on the Contact Us menu item at the top of our webpage, select this show, and type in your message, and it'll land in my inbox. And finally, if you are a developer and you would like to be a guest on the Twip App Show, reach out. Use that same contact page, reach out to us, and let us know. We would love to hear from you and see if we can get you and your app on the show. And with that, it is time to put that lens cap back on and go edit some photos. Mm -hmm.